for mobile. So today we'll get into not only just Couchbase Lite, but talking about what Couchbase is doing in the mobile space. We'll go into you know how we are, how our lives have really changed with applications, how the application interaction has really evolved, and we'll go into uh, the Couchbase mobile solution and the Couchbase uh, mobile strategy, JSON Anywhere, and go into the various pieces, including Couchbase Lite and Couchbase Team Gateway. I'll then stop uh, the overview for. Uh, give us a chance to have some Q and A before we walk. Uh, before I hand the microphone over to Chris to give us a walkthrough on some sample code on an existing uh, real-world uh, productivity app that shows us exactly what Couchbase can do and what Couch, uh, Couchbase Team Gateway can provide us as well. So let's take a uh, step back first to see how applications have changed over time. So back in the 1970s, 80s, we were looking at applications being served from a monolithic mainframe, serving thousands of apps to millions of users, users that are very specific, um, operators that were using uh, those apps. But as we progressed into the PC era, we're now looking at an architecture of client to server, servers that were now monolithic uh, enterprise databases using, for example, SAP, PeopleSoft, and this was being served to now hundreds of millions of users. That brings us to now, to today. We're looking now at architecture of cloud and mobile device, and we're, being, we're serving millions of apps, small, tiny apps that are easily ingestible to billions of users all over the world. What does that mean for the future? We believe here that the next generation applications will mean devices always in contact with us, and those devices always be in contact with the cloud. We're looking really at an architecture of cloud in the center and devices on the edge. And we already have a lot of great use, use cases that are kind of, that are forming this uh, architecture. We have single user interactions, multi-user interactions, including uh, social and group. And we also are starting to see interactions with enterprises. We're also uh, uh, taking the next step with devices and wearable technology. And we're bringing in a lot of new data, sensory data, uh, that's unstructured, that gives us a really great idea of you know, how we are living our lives. In the near future, we'll be looking at applications that are seeing you know, how our heartbeats, our patterns in our health. And that data can be sourced back to uh, the cloud and distributed to users that we want to see that data. For example, health professionals who can track how our, how, how our, our living has been and give us a uh, better feedback of how we can uh, live healthier lives. That brings us to our strategy, JSON Anywhere. So we've already seen a movement of, uh, of developers moving to NoSQL as we're ingesting, we're finding more and more rich data that's unstructured. And JSON is a really great way to handle this unstructured data. Couchbase, we already have Couchbase Server, which is a document-oriented database that serves uh, JSON uh, documents. And we find that this is very popular, this is already very popular with web application developers. But this makes a lot of sense for mobile application developers as well. And we've brought JSON back to the device on this Couchbase Lite. So now we have JSON in the cloud, JSON on device, and we're also looking for JSON in the, on the wire. So there's no need for data transformation. That's Couchbase Sync Gateway. And that's our complete mobile solution. To, reiter to reiterate, we have three pieces in this complete mobile solution. We first have Couchbase Server, our document-oriented database that can be served on-premise or in the cloud. We then have Couchbase Lite, which we now have support for iOS and Android. And we also have Couchbase Sync Gateway, the sync tier that ties these two pieces together. Taking another deeper look, let's look at the architecture. So with Couchbase Server, you can serve it on-premise as a private cloud or for folks who want more on-hand cluster management. It can also be uh, used on, on AWS in the cloud, going to our, uh, our, vendor, uh, our vendor in uh, Amazon Marketplace to be easily deployed in just a single click. We also have just been, uh, we also been experimenting with database as a service with Couchbase Cloud, which is a new experimental sandbox that to help developers get a sense of what Couchbase server has to offer and help developers get ramped up with our technology. 
At the next level, we have Sync Gateway. So Sync Gateway is our scalable sync solution uh, that is uh, easy to scale out. So if you have just a one user, 100 users, you can easily scale out with uh, additional Sync Gateway instances or even uh, add more nodes to your uh, existing uh, database cluster. Sync Gateway talks back to Couchbase Server and also connects down to Couchbase Lite on device. Couchbase Lite is uh, our on-device uh, NoSQL solution, and we currently support uh, iOS um, with Objective-C APIs, and we're working right now on Android uh, support with native uh, Java APIs. So Couchbase Lite works great offline, but it also is great for collaborative sharing experiences. And when uh, taking those into account, we uh, Couchbase Lite talks back to Sync Gateway, and it does so using the concept of channels. With channels, we do, uh, with channels, uh, documents can be uh, routed correctly to uh, back to the cloud or to other, other users who are sharing and working on the same documents. So how did this all work, though, before Couchbase Lite? We've seen collaborative apps. We've seen, uh, there's, been, there's a multitude of uh, mobile apps today, but how did this work and how is that going? So before, locally, you could use SQLite or Core Data. But this is going back to the idea of relational databases. And we're in a, we're mobile, uh, mobile apps are looking more and more to consume rich data, unstructured data, and data that they haven't even fathomed yet. So with that, we're really looking at uh, the needs that aren't being fit by relational databases. For syncing, we have, there are, for thinking, there are a couple of different services that are available right now. For example, file sharing services like Dropbox or iCloud. But this isn't a real database. They're file sharing services specifically. And with that, there's a lack of ownership, insight. And the biggest thing, though, is that there's a, not being a database, there's a lack of, of, of analytics. There's no real knowledge about what exactly the users are storing in those services um, through your mobile app. And as a developer, you really want to uh, understand you know, how your users are using your application and what, are, what better ways you can improve on that. So alternatively, there are services like Embasses or mobile backends as a service, like Parser Convey, which are great, but again, we're talking about a full, the assumption of a full online experience. And we're really missing out on the offline which is still very much a huge use case in a very occasionally connected world. So to write a good application, you really need to be thinking about offline. And uh, with uh, Parser Convey, there's some limited caching, but not never a true offline experience. And another big piece of that is if you're an uh, enterprise developer, you really don't have true ownership, again, with uh, these services. Uh, if you're looking to do um, enterprise, uh, enterprise application solutions, you could look at the Couchbase mobile solution and have on-premise Couchbase server and Sync Gateway and be able to control exactly uh, all the data that's being sourced to Couchbase Lite on device. So now let's jump back into Couchbase Lite and talk a bit more about what Couchbase Lite is and what kind of benefits are there for Couchbase Lite. Couchbase Lite is a NoSQL database for mobile devices and uses JSON. The main features are that it's ultra lightweight, secure, and meant to have a small footprint. We also provide native support for iOS and Android, but we also provide REST APIs for web developers who are looking for a hybrid approach, say, writing in HTML5 and then using PhoneGap to provide hybrid solutions. We also, our, our APIs include full document management support, reading, writing, for example, replication, uh, in, uh, correct indexing, creating views, querying, um, full document uh, support, as well as attachment support. So for blob data, things like videos, uh, photos, whatever you can name, we also have support for that as well. And the big piece that, uh, you know, so the big piece for share a collaborative applications is conflict resolution, and we have support with that in Couchbase Lite, so that when you're writing a document and uh, someone that you're collaborating with is writing a document, you're going, there is a 
points of uh, conflict resolution at, every, uh, at many different points to provide really power, powerful resolution and to ensure that you have the latest revisions with uh, uh, no, no missing data. And this is a full feature list of exactly what Couchbase Lite has to offer. We've just highlighted a few uh, native APIs, RIST APIs, JSON support, um, uh, indexing, querying, and we also have things like uh, appropriate data routing via channels, changes feed to provide de developers visibility on data changes, peer-to-peer um, -peer support via REST APIs, just to name a few. So we've talked a bit about the features, but what does this actually get you? What does this really mean? Well, with Couchbase Lite, we're enabling a new class of applications, applications that are data intensive, highly responsive, very interactive. And what can be designed, we're really looking at you. We're looking at folks to pick this up and uh, show us what they're building for the next generation applications. There are a lot of use cases that can be thought of just thinking of the offline use case, which is the big benefit of Couchbase Lite. For example, you're on a plane, you're on a cruise, or you're remote completely somewhere else. What can you do to make sure that you're still pr productive and not with just cache data or old data, but the latest data that you have at your latest sync? So with uh, Couchbase Lite, we're looking at a, being productive no matter where you are. And we're also looking at rapid development for mobile developers who are looking for that intuitive JSON data and having that available natively locally on their device. So in summary, what you get is JSON Anywhere, being able to have JSON data no matter where you are, and easy sync, being able to sync your data uh, easily, uh, fluidly, uh, and easy to scale out or, um, or adapt as your needs change. We'll dive into more about Sync in just a second, but first I want to talk a little bit about our partnership. One of the really exciting things about Couchbase Lite is that we've been working with a couple of partners to provide support for a lot of different development communities. Uh, I'd mentioned PhoneGap before, and that's one of the things that we're really excited about. Because although we have native support, there, we do know that there are developers out there who are really looking at, at HTML5 as a solution and deploy on many devices. So with PhoneGap, we're supporting HTML5 developers to, be, to let them be able to develop in their web technologies and be able to develop on iOS and Android using REST APIs. This is already available on GitHub and Cordova plugin registry, but it'll be coming soon to buildphonegap.com. We're also working with Couchbase Lite for Xamarin. Couchbase Lite for Xamarin is already available today under the Developer Center for iOS. And we've partnered with Xamarin to support the C-Sharp community. So the C-Sharp community can also, be, uh, can also develop applications similar in the vein of PhoneGap to iOS and Android, but with native support. Our C-Sharp binding includes sample applications and a really great getting started guide so that developers can take a look at that and start developing with C-Sharp with, with Couchbase Lite, uh, but back with Couchbase Lite for iOS and Android. And finally, we also have Couchbase Lite Titanium, which we just released last week. This is now available on the Accelerator Marketplace, and the idea is that for developers who are still looking for a rich native experience but are more familiar with the JavaScript language can write in the JavaScript-based SDK specifically for iOS or Android using the uh, Titanium uh, SDK. You can check this out already at marketplace.accelerator.com or also on GitHub under our Couchbase Lab uh, uh, directory. Now this brings us back to thinking. So we've talked a lot about uh, what can be done locally, but now let's talk a bit more about thinking. Uh, so we have Couchbase Sync Gateway as our thinking solution. It's an easy, reliable data sync to the cloud. With Sync Gateway, you can write in a single page of code uh, your entire sync function. And it's really easy to administer using REST APIs. And it's very easy to scale out as well. You have as your needs grow or your throughput changes uh, uh, evolve, you can easily scale out by just um, by just spinning up one more sync gate, 
uh, another SYNC gateway instance or however many you need or even adding more nodes. But the big benefit is definitely that 10 times reduction development. If you've ever had to write SYNC code, you, can, you know how hairy it can get, how crazy it can be, and how complicated it is to test. But with SYNC gateway, it's all done for you, really easy to write out in a template format with a ton of documentation. And it has, and it's built to be able to support millions of users. So you can easily scale out without having to worry or adjust your syncing. So how does the syncing actually work? Let's dive into that. So for uh, Sync Gateway, you can, the main, uh, the idea is that with Catch Plus Lite and Sync Gateway, you can collaborate. And we collaborate using this concept of channels. So for each document, uh, for each document, you can specify a set of channels that that document belongs to. And for each of those channels, you can uh, specify what users have access to those channels. And in that way, you, your, users only, uh, your users only get a subset of documents of your entire database to ensure that those users only get documents that are relevant to them and that they, have, they should have access to. But how do we ensure that? How do we ensure that users are, have appropriate access to those documents? And how do we ensure to do that in, on networks that we aren't familiar with, say, the guest Wi-Fi at the airport or on 3G um, somewhere else? Well, we have authentication protocols for that. For example, we have uh, support for a couple third-party uh, authentication services like Facebook and Persona, uh, Mozilla Persona. We also have support for OAuth and any custom authentication that, you, uh, that you're using today. So no matter what, you're, the documents that are relevant to you and only you uh, go to you. Let's look at this a bit visually to get a better idea of how this channel and user access works. So for example, I have a document one assigned to channel A, and a document two assigned to channel A and B. If I'm a user and I'm given access to A and B, I should be getting documents one and two. But if I'm a user given channel just, uh, just A, or sorry, just B, I should only just get access to document two. And so with this, uh, no matter if it's just two channels, multiple clients, uh, data that's being routed, uh, say for example, this purple data, I can ensure that that data is only going to say client two, whereas this other data that I'm collaborating with uh, client five, for example, only gets this yellow data. So in this way, using the ideas of channels, user access, and authentication, I ensure that data is only going to uh, my, the collaborators that I that I'm looking to uh, give access to. So now that we've gone through Cache-Based Lite and uh, Cache-Based Sync Gateway, I want to also give a, a brief idea of you know, how, how this could actually be used in the real world. And we already have a customer today, uh, even though we're just in beta, called Infinite Campus. In Infinite Campus is using uh, Couch, the entire Cache-Based mobile solution uh, for an in-classroom management tool and content distribution platform. Camp <clears throat> Infinite Campus was tackling a pretty big problem, which is how to improve low classroom engagement and how to give teachers more feedback into what, um, why students were having trouble with certain uh, topics or uh, classroom material. And also the idea that students were not always going to get rich media materials that are, gr are growing, need, uh, growing part of the curriculum as a supplement to their existing textbook or hard copy materials. So with this challenge, so with this challenge, Infinite Campus was looking to use tools that students were already uh, were already using that were as part of their lifestyle, namely web and um, namely mobile and web applications. And they also wanted to be able to provide teachers real time feedback in the classroom to guide those teachers on their instruction, uh, instructional material. And they also wanted to make sure that students had access to rich media materials, even if they were offline and off campus. And that's where the Couchbase mobile solution came in. With the Couchbase mobile solution, teachers are building materials using the mobile, web, mobile or web client and being able to distribute that content in classroom to each of their students for real-time feedback and giving and 
then being able to guide their lessons based on the feedback from, teach, uh, from students. For example, a student might be having trouble with a certain concept, they could let the teacher know in some feedback, and the teacher could pause and give uh, further instruction and detail on that concept. Alternatively, teachers are also able to distribute content, say for studying or for homework. And this content could then be kept, this content could then be stored on the student's uh, Couchbase Lite, um, the Couchbase Lite back on their device, and they could take that home, even if they were in an offline environment or just on the bus, for example, going uh, back and forth to school, um, and work on their study and uh, homework. So this idea of really rich data, uh, data-driven application. Is really giving us a new uh, a new way of viewing and thinking about applications. We've seen just an example for example, uh, for learning, but we also are rethinking the ideas of say point of sale. We're we're working with a couple of developers who are looking to change that using point of sale applications that are both mobile and web based. And we're also uh, seeing you know how how to do expenses, how to do expense tracking that can that with the cash based mobile solution that can that can ease, that can be revisioned using um, cash based light on device being able to track no matter where you are and having that sync back to cash based server and aggregate that uh, expense tracking uh, once uh, those devices are back in a, um, a sync, uh, to have are back to having syncing availability so before we get started on how to get started I'd like to leave open some time for some Q&A on this overview. So um, uh, let me hand it back to Franco. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah, we have a lot of questions coming in. We're going to answer a couple of those uh, right now, and then we will have more space for Q&A at the end of the presentation. I would also like to remind everyone that we have another webinar next week on Couchbase Lite under the hood, which is going to be a more technical overview of the product. So for those of you who are interested, it is uh, possible to register right now from our webinar page. So we have a question from Mike. Um, so is Couchbase Lite already available? And if not, when it will be launched? Right, Couchbase Lite is already available today in beta, and we're looking to launch, launch uh, uh, our GA in early next year. So you can add, download right now for both iOS and Android um, off the Couchbase, uh, off Couchbase.com. Just go to mobile.couchbase.com to get those downloads. Thank you. And another question, um, how optimized in terms of network users is the traffic between Couchbase Lite and Couchbase Server, since many devices have uh, a limitation on uh, data that they can uh, access every month from their network? Uh, so how, is, uh, how optimized is this? Uh, uh, data data transfer between Couchbase Lite and Couchbase Server. We're currently working on those optimizations right now, and that's actually some of the big feedback that we're looking for in, in during beta. Um, so if you are using Couchbase Lite, do drop us a line and give us some uh, give us some feedback. But yeah, we're working right now on some performance um, performance related data. Um, I actually have a Tron here from the Couchbase Lite team. Um, who also has uh, something to add to that? Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to say, with with the correct the correct use of uh, the way you design the channels, you can actually minimize data transfer with the channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about also uh, optimizing with uh, channels to ensure that uh, users are only getting documents that are truly that they truly need to ensure that not only on device but also in sync that it's uh, efficiently syncing and getting data. Thank you. And another question from Toby. So is there a site limit for syncing rich media content such as uh, audio or video files? Or is there an easy way to store the data to Amazon, for example? Currently, there is a size limitation of 20 megabytes. Um, but we are working uh, toward uh, improving our attachment support. And in terms of being able to store attachments uh, independently on, uh, say, S3, we're working on that as well. Thank you, Jessica. Um, let's go back to the presentation now, but we will have more time at the end of the session to answer more questions. Great. So I'll now hand it off to Chris. Uh, so uh, Chris Anderson is our mobile architect and uh, co-founder of the company, and uh, also will um, we'll be going through a walkthrough 
of some sample code and give you a real sense of you know, how this works um, in code. So uh, I'll hand it off to Chris, um, and he'll show you how to get started in five minutes. So how do I? <laughs> yeah. We are on. So um, let's see. I hope folks are seeing my presentation screen. It should be a slide with the application runtime on it. Yes. All right. So uh, this is just kind of a view of what we're going to look at uh, from a high-level perspective. I saw some questions in there, just kind of generally about Couchbase Lite and how it's implemented and whatnot. So uh, the gist of it is that Couchbase Lite is an embedded database that lives inside your application runtime. And uh, for instance, on iOS, you install it just by dropping a framework into Xcode. Or in Android, you can install it just by adding another Maven uh, dependency to your project. So it embeds in your app just like any other native library. And uh, we use uh, the operating system provided storage and do you know all the best practices regarding operating system key management, security, and encryption that we can uh, to provide you know sort of the most secure storage that's available for an embedded uh, database. Um, so that's what's on the screen right now. It's kind of uh, the the native approach where you would have, say, Objective-C code interfacing with the Objective-C version of Couchbase Lite um, storing stuff on iOS. And it would be you know, pretty much the same picture for uh, Java code uh, connecting directly to Couchbase Lite implemented in Java running on Android. Uh, but there were also some questions in, uh, in the chat previously about, uh, oops, excuse me. Um, there we go. Um, about the uh, the architecture, not just of Couchbase Lite, but of uh, PhoneGap. So I'll talk about a couple of those and then show the demo. Um, so if we look at Couchbase Lite up close, this is again all the native code that is, uh, you know, inside of the library. And I will cover the pieces kind of quickly. There's going to be the more in-depth technical deep dive webinar uh, next week where we can talk about these in more detail. Uh, but the first thing you see at the bottom of the diagram there is the key value JSON storage. So for that, um, right now we use SQLite, although from an architecture standpoint, you can think of the storage as being pluggable. So you know, in the future, we may end up building an even more lightweight version of Couchbase Lite for embedded devices that uses an embedded storage engine. Um, and this is going to be you know, conceptually similar to what's going on in Couchbase Server. It just stores JSON documents. Uh, there was also a question about the uh, query and document capabilities of Couchbase Lite and how they compare to Couchbase Server. So if you've ever written a view on Couchbase Server, it's going to be pretty much the same deal. It's the MapReduce indexers that allow you to write uh, you know, a little map function that figures out which field in your document to index based on. And you can also use Reduce as a way to run aggregations over your indexes. Um, what is different? compared to Couchbase Server, where you're required to write your MapReduce in JavaScript. In Couchbase Lite, you're uh, you know, suggested to write your MapReduce in your application language so it can be compiled, so either Objective-C or Java. And that way, it'll run you know, as native as possible, as lightweight as possible on the mobile devices. We also offer the ability to run JavaScript MapReduce. And you'll see that I'm doing that in the example that I'll show in a few minutes. Um, but for your garden variety native application, you're going to write native views. The query engine runs on top of the indexes that are built by MapReduce, and so this is where you'll you know define things like start key and end key that I could go into in great depth, but you know we'll, we'll talk about that again at a later time. Um, the gist of it being that it's more or less the same query engine that you're familiar with from Couchbase Server. Uh, here's where all the magic comes in. There's the sync engine, which runs as its own thread so that it doesn't block UI operations. And it connects to the remote Couchbase server via sync gateway to pull in changes as they occur in the cloud and push changes back up to the cloud you know, as the network is available. And the sync engine is where um, you know, a lot of the enhancements we know people want are going to be. So for instance, a really obvious one is uh, not pulling down attachments right away, so you would just sync the main documents and then have the attachments backfill when the uh, 
you know, when the user actually requests it on the device. And, and so those are the kinds of attachment or enhancements we're thinking about doing. Um, a lot of them end up being in the sync engine. The application API is the part that you will interface with as a developer. So that's either going to be Java classes or Objective-C models or uh, JavaScript REST API, depending on you know, how you're interfacing with it. And also, uh, we've done the work so that when you're using the Xamarin or uh, the Titanium adapters, you'll get a API that looks, you know, sort of has the same surface area as our full native API. So you're able to, you know, change all the configuration and interact with the documents with all the same kind of fine grain control that you can do with native code uh, through Xamarin or Titanium also. And so the application API, if you want to learn more about that, that's all, you know, in our documentation on mobile.couchbase.com. Um, so that's just to give you a sense of what's inside the, the Couchbase light box. Now we'll go back to uh, what I showed before. Here's, you know, what's inside of a basic operating system process for a native app. And then we'll transition and I'll show what a PhoneGap application looks like. So here's the PhoneGap version of this. And the big thing you can see we've done, uh, we've added kind of two main pieces. Uh, we have a REST connector in blue that we've added at the bottom that provides the Couchbase Lite API over a REST style interface. Um, and then we've added the web runtime container at the top. So that's your phone gap container. Uh, that can do things like pull in native functionality like the camera or other sensors. Um, and so we use it for that as well. Um, the uh, the other big difference, of course, is that your application logic is written in JavaScript. And so there's one little native API that we, you know, push all the way through and, and share to the JavaScript runtime. And that's what that blue text on the left-hand side is, where you can ask your Couchbase Lite instance what URL to access it via. And on iOS, that's um, a secure connection. It's, you know, not even a socket. It's just an abstraction inside of your application runtime. On Android, that's an actual uh, localhost socket. And so uh, that's some of the security, enhance security enhancements we're doing is to allow you to write a secure Android phone gap app. Um, so now you have maybe kind of a high level overview of the runtime that I'm going to demo. Uh, I will now kind of give you a, a look at what features to be on the lookout for as we dive into the app. Um, so the way I'll do this is I'll run through the app once and just kind of show it off and then we'll come back and look at it at the code level. So the, uh, the three features here that I want to focus on, two of them are on the client and then one of them is in the cloud. And so the cloud is all the sharing stuff and the ability to log in via Facebook and, um, and then some logic that shows who's allowed to do what with the data in the cloud. Um, the stuff on the left in the client is more about the programming model that you'll use if you're building one of these phone gap apps. And that same programming model is going to extend to native apps as well. So there's kind of two, uh, two key flows there, right? There is uh, the REST interface that we use to do CRUD operations against the documents, you know, changing data or updating data or toggling a checkbox. And then there are, uh, the queries that we run to update the UI. So on the one hand, you're changing data, and on the other hand, you're repainting the user interface to you know, let the user know something has changed. And the architecture that you can do on uh, you know, JavaScript web-based or native Java or iOS is with these live queries. And so essentially, we give you some helpers that make it real easy to redraw your UI when the database changes. And there's kind of two reasons to do this. One is that it's, you know, one less thing to thread through your application state. Oh, the user just clicked checkbox X. Um, so now I've got to repaint this and this and this. Um, and the other is that when you're building these distributed applications, kind of the, the really interesting part is that the changes are happening often as not on a remote device. And so you might be looking at a screen and some user someone else, somewhere else, you know, changes something and you want that to be reflected on your screen right away. Uh, so if you build your application using live queries, 
uh, which we offer support for on the various platforms, then uh, the database will kind of take care of triggering your UI updates. And, uh, you know, it's a simple thing that, that most UI programmers end up doing anyway, but it's nice to have some support from the database for it, especially for distributed operations. So before I pop over to the demo, I'll show you just like a little sneak preview of the data structures. Uh, there are two main data types uh, for the application. There are the lists, um, and the list can have some members who are allowed to access it. It can have a name. And then there are tasks. And the main thing about a task is that it belongs to a list and it can be checked off or not. So let's go manipulate some lists and tasks. Uh, and uh, oh yeah, see, see what we get. So I'm going to go over into Xcode. And actually, before I do that, I'll show you uh, where I started because you know it's really supposed to be sort of uh, that you can get to this hello world point about five minutes after you start hacking on it. So here on uh, docs.couchbase.com, um, you can probably just put Couchbase Lite phone gap into Google, um, but you'll get to this URL for uh, getting started on phone gap. And there's architecture stuff and then some uh, installation. And a lot of this environment, most people, like if you already have Homebrew installed on a Mac, you know, a lot of this is just getting kind of the basics installed. But if you're already a PhoneGap developer and you've got it installed locally, then you can walk through these steps and it'll have you create a new app and install our PhoneGap plugin. So you can install this plugin, you know, via this one line of shell. Um, the app also requires a few other plugins. And then actually clone the app code into that newly generated app and launch and run. So um, if you go do that, Right now, um, I'm in the middle of figuring out what's the deal with iOS 7. Um, it's, you know, our technology works fine with iOS 7, something with the, the example app I need to work on. And so be forewarned that when you get to this step of running it, you're going to need to um, go into Xcode and run it on iOS 6. So that's what we're going to do um, until, you know, this afternoon when I have that bug fixed. And uh, it's building and launching. And now we have this application running on, uh, on iOS 6 here with no data in it. So it's a brand new install. And I can create a new list of, uh, of breakfast restaurants. And uh, now I can go in here and I can add the diner and I can add the waffle shop and I can add the coffee shop. And I've only been to the diner, so I'll check it off. Um, but, you know, if uh, I was sharing this list with other people, they could check off Copy Shop and, and it would show up there. So we can have as many of these lists as we want and uh, we can share them with different people. So I'll show you that last bit here. I'm going to log in and I have to get this right. Um, so I'm going to pull this over here on this other screen. I'm just putting in my Facebook password. So you're missing out on the glory of being able to log into Facebook with me. Um, and now I'm logged into Facebook, and it's uh, going and fetching all my existing lists off of the the server that's running today. So the uh, you can see I had some other lists that were put in as you know part of a demo, uh, candy bars, etc. Um, the thing that's kind of neat. So I've got a uh, list, you know, the uh, dessert shops or the the breakfast restaurants. I can go and I can share that with other users. So when I logged in via Facebook, um, it went and it fetched all the other users who had logged into this app via Facebook, and it gives me the option of sharing this list with them. So now any of those users, when they launch the app, they'll see this list come up. Um, so that's kind of, now you should have a sense of what the app does. And uh, let's see, there may be, Maybe worth pulling this up if I have one. Um, so the uh, it can also do photographs. Um, it's all it's in the simulator right now, or else I would be able to take a photograph. Uh, so yeah, uh, apologies for that, but it's got you know binary attachments that that can do photographs, um, and we'll see that here in the screenshot in a second. So 
uh, those are the data types that I was dealing with. And now we're going to kind of go back through and reflect on what we just saw. Um, so the first screen we saw was a list of all the to-do lists. And it's just rendered with an HTML query uh, and uh, some JavaScript to, to run that, the query and fill out the template. So uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure that, um, that we actually saw all this. Um, so here's the JavaScript that implements that sign-in screen. I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but you can see that uh, what I've done is I've, I've said, hey, anytime the database changes, run, uh, run this view query here. And so it's querying the, the view of to-do lists, and it's putting the most recently modified ones at the top, and then putting that, uh, that data into this template. Um, so there's also a task list that we can drill into um, you know, that I showed you can uh, add photos, or you can check off to-do items. Um, so let's look at the code now to toggle a task checkbox. So that's uh, this. This was just for running a view query, and the actual database code is is just this top line of code here. Uh, in order to toggle a checkbox, it's even more simple. So we call this function with the ID of the document that corresponds to the task that we want to toggle. So we'll load the document using an HTTP GET using our REST interface. If this was uh, native code, then we would already just have a model object on hand that we could toggle the, uh, the properties on. But with this REST code, we load it via the document ID. We're able to toggle this Boolean and set the timestamp and then put it back here with config db put back to the same ID that we got it from. And if you're you know, familiar with kind of event-based JavaScript programming, you'll see, oh, that looks like a callback that isn't doing anything when it gets called. And the reason why we don't care about doing anything when our callback gets called is because we're using this, uh, this live query and live update technique so that anytime something happens in the uh, database, the screen gets updated. So I'll go back over here to the code and you'll see I'm not doing anything when the checkbox is toggled, but in the application, when I check a box, it refreshes the screen. And that's just because every time the application changes, this database changed event is triggered and the code that, you know, whatever I've registered to run repaints the UI based on those changes. So that's all supported, you know, natively for iOS or Android or phone guys. So uh, we also saw the ability to sign in with Facebook. And uh, we also support uh, Mozilla Persona and other OAuths, or just indeed like full-on custom uh, authentication. And so the idea with Facebook is we get uh, on the mobile device, you can use whatever means you want to go get an access token. And so iOS, for instance, supports a uh, you know native login with Facebook mechanism, and that'll give you an access token. Or you can use the Facebook SDK or in my case, I used, uh, you know, actually the web login flow that Facebook offers. And once you have that access token, you can hand it to the sync gateway, which will verify it with Facebook and then use it to establish a session. Uh, the same mechanism is going to work, you know, without using a social media login. Like if you had, say, a Rails app with an existing login system in place, um, you might just make a uh, request from some Objective C code running in your mobile app to the you know session endpoint on your Rails app to get a cookie um, or or otherwise you know get a token and then pass that to the Couchbase Lite uh, synchronization API on your mobile device and then it will synchronize with Sync Gateway uh, which can then you know authenticate your user via your legacy Rails app. So we really wanted this to be um, kind of an 80% solution to get you up and running with something easy like Facebook for login, but uh, we knew it had to be flexible enough to where it could work with any existing authentication systems. Um, so we really want to hear from you, especially if uh, you're trying to do some authentication thing that you feel like might be a little bit 
of an edge case or something because we hope it's not and so uh, either hearing from you means we'll make the documentation better or we'll add a feature uh, because it really should be flexible. Um, I mentioned earlier photo, photo attachments. So here is the code for that. You can see you know, all but a couple of lines of code here have to do with the camera um, and there's just a couple of lines of database code. So we're going to load the document that we want to attach the photo to. Um, we attach the photo as a base64 encoded uh, you know, JPEG data and then we save the document back and uh, use that same live query update to redraw our UI. So uh, that's kind of wrapping it up for the part focused on the client, but I also said I was going to talk about the, uh, you know, the server and the sync gateway component, and I'm not going to spend um, too much time on it because this is something that can get in depth really quick, um, and I want to save some time for questions. So if you want to learn more about Sync Gateway, we're going to have a webinar coming up about that in the future also. So here's the basic components of the Sync Gateway. It's got a REST API. Uh, I talked about how that authenticates. And then um, the application itself has a synchronization function, which gives you, uh, you know, the ability to control who can see what and uh, which events get broadcast to which mobile clients. So as uh, I want to, I want to talk about that mostly. Um, everything else that the Sync Gateway is doing is mostly concerned with, you know, keeping things in storage, being a database, and uh, making sure that events flow in a way that, when you have, uh, you know, a tier of Sync Gateway instances running side by side, that you can scale it out like that. Um, so. This is the sync function, and I can talk about this for you know 20 minutes, but I won't. Uh, but that application that we just went through, this is more or less the entire backend logic for that to-do application. And my guess is uh, that for most applications, you know, even where the UI and stuff is significantly more complex, you're going to have uh, somewhat simple sync functions, and maybe. You know, maybe you end up with 500 lines of code for a very complex app, but for something with just a few different types of, you know, groupings of users and different uh, access control levels, the idea is that you should be able to do, you know, 80% of applications in this sync function. Um, we've also, you know, put some escape valves in here for you to do your, uh, you know, your own custom authorization and filtering, but. Uh, but for the most part, again, the hope is that rather than having like a 200 or you know a thousand lines of Ruby on Rails code or Java code or something on the back end, that you can just have this uh, relatively simple function that maps from the data in your application to the uh, access control and uh, filtering kind of state. So. Uh, What's happening in the case of this function is that it's making sure that only members of a given to-do list, so people who've been granted access to that list, can uh, read from a list or, uh, or modify the list items. So uh, we'll talk more about how this function works in, uh, in a future webinar. I guess there's, you know, if someone wants to go start hacking on it right away, there's, there's obviously the documentation online, but the main things to look at here are like this function called channel here is putting the task documents in a particular channel, you know, based on their list ID. And this other call to channel is putting the list documents into that same channel so that a, a list document and all its tasks are available together. Um, and this other call, the access call here is giving both the channel owner and the members of the channel uh, the ability to read from that list. And there's some more details that I won't talk about right now, but you know it's just sort of um, more of the same. And the idea is that as you know, say a new user joins the system and creates a new list and invites some friends, uh, that list document itself can trigger the access control change so that uh, your application can do dynamic data routing, you know, without having to have a whole bunch of moving pieces. So, uh, you know, as we're, 
as we're doing these writes, they're going to go in via the sync function, and when the sync function you know, validates the write and knows which channels it goes to, then it's written out to storage and becomes available for reads. So uh, in the sync function, again, we talked about, oh, every time I click that, yeah, and we talked about the, uh, um, the different functions you can call. So there is validation, like require user. You can also require um, that the current user is able to uh, access the channels, you know, that the document is on. Um, or required that the current user has some particular role. Uh, you can put documents on particular channels, and then you can grant access uh, to particular users to a given channel. So these are the, uh, the sort of the main uh, responsibilities of that sync function. And because, and there's a question earlier about like, are you able to modify data as it passes through? And part of where we get all the simplicity is that you're not able to modify that data. The data just flows through the, uh, the function and is routed and the revisions are tracked. Um, but, but basically you're not like taking fields off or adding fields at the, you know, the boundary of your sync gateway. So that's it for what I've got. I think we have time for some questions and, uh, you know, if you want to get started, mobile.couchbase.com is the best place to, uh, you know, to look for that. So uh, I'll hand it back to Franco and we'll go through some of the remaining questions. Thank you, Chris. Uh, yes, we have uh, uh, a lot of questions coming in. Uh, and again, for those questions that we're not able to answer uh, live during the session, we will follow up in the next few days offline. And we will also have a blog to kind of summarize the, the main question. So the first question is, what are the capabilities supported by iOS API? Sure. So uh, that's kind of a big question, but um, the gist of it is that you can interact with the documents. So you can update and uh, delete and create documents. Uh, you can also configure synchronization. So which endpoints you want to sync with and, you know, what sort of uh, authentication you want to, to take with those. Uh, and then, you know, the last one is the query API. So building indexes and querying against it. And then there's, you know, there's also some smaller uh, APIs. I can't document the whole thing here, but, you know, some of the live query stuff I was talking about. Um, so the idea to put that into like a more useful context is we want to have, if not exactly the same API across all platforms, we want to have very similar APIs with the goal being to make it so you can work with the same data everywhere. So you might have a Xamarin app on Windows, um, you know, or something uh, interacting with the same data as a uh, iOS app, you know, interacting with the same data as a PhoneGap app, depending on the platform. Perfect, thank you, thank you, Chris. Um, another question is, is there a practical limit to the number of channels you can have? Not really. There's a practical limit to the number of channels per document that would make sense from a performance standpoint. So every time a document is a member of a channel, uh, we have to do some bookkeeping associated with that channel when the document is changed. And that means that, you know, you want your documents to belong to sort of a, a bounded number of channels. If you have a document that's belonging to hundreds of channels, you might want to rethink it. Another question that we have is, um, so since each phone has its own channel, can the same user access their data from different devices or uh, operating systems? For example, a user who owns an Android phone and an iPad. Yeah, absolutely. So channels are um, abstract enough to where you will have the same channels on multiple devices. So like in that to-do list, I, you know, in that I showed uh, your channels correspond to the to-do lists and you'll have you know, one user might have five devices and they're all logged in as the same user and so they, all those devices have the same channel. Um, and you might have, you know, some channels shared with different sets of users. And so they'll be on those users' devices. Um, you know, you could also do things like only subset, you know, pull some channels down to an iPad and pull other channels down to an Android for the same user. Thank you, Chris. So a question about sync gateways. 
what type of administration capabilities is, are supported by uh, Sync Gateway? So an administration on the Sync Gateway is all via a REST API. Um, so there's the port that you actually have your synchronizing clients connect to, and then there's an admin port. And the admin port is a superset of the regular ports. So you can do admin operations on the data via the admin port, um, but you can also do things like uh, grant particular roles to users or uh, specify synchronization functions via the admin port. There's not an admin uh, graphical console yet, like a HTML style interface for it. Um, we know we need something like that, and you know we'd like to allow you to change all the all the configuration as well as get some way to inspect uh, the data as it synchronizes. Thank you, Chris. Um, so another question. Is a REST interface to Couchbase server available so you can run the same JavaScript code in PhoneGap as in an online HTML web app? No, right now um, the, the best solution is you end up having to write your own kind of uh, application server to stand between your web front end and Couchbase server. Um, one of the other options would be to look at PouchDB, which can synchronize with Sync Gateway and run inside a browser. So, um, yeah, that's that's still kind of fresh territory there. Thank you. How is the storage limit for Couchbase Lite on the device controlled? So that's up to the operating system vendor. And I think, you know, for apps installed via the App Store on iOS, you have pretty much unlimited storage. The user might decide to erase your app, but uh, there's no real limits that are gonna stand in the way of your sort of average application. Okay, we have a time for a couple of more questions. So can we have a custom user authentication? Uh, for example, if the user has been already authenticated by our own authentication, uh, I don't want to force the user to enter another credential to authenticate against Couchbase Lite server. Yeah, we have that support. Um, if you go look in the documentation, you know, under that mobile.couchbase.com, in the Sync Gateway documentation, there's a chapter on how to do uh, third-party custom authentication. Thank you, Chris. Um, so one last question. Um, so again, we talked about before, um, but so is the sync gateway on the client side or server side? Can you uh, clarify a little more? Yeah, so the, the big picture architecture is your data is stored in Couchbase server and no one should ever interact with that directly. The sync gateway uh, gets the data out of Couchbase server to hand to the clients. So the, the point of all the sync stuff is that the data is kind of everywhere. Right? You may have your primary interaction with data stored on the client, but as soon as uh, the mobile network is available, the data trickles back up to the cloud where it's available, you know, not just as a backup for that device, but also if the user has other devices or the user wants to share the data with other users. Um, so yeah, so the data kind of lives everywhere, um, but Sync Gateway is the only thing that the mobile devices should be connecting with. Great. Thank you, Chris. So with this, we are running out of time and we need to close this session. But again, we will uh, follow up with uh, every question in the following few days. Uh, we have all of them, so we will um, get back to you within two or three days. And if you have additional questions, you can email us at webinar at .com. Again, I want to remind everyone that we will have another webinar next Tuesday about Couchbase Lite under the hood, and we will go into uh, very uh, deep details about the architecture of Couchbase Lite. With this, I want to thank you all for joining us today, and I hope to see you uh, next Tuesday. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.